Well, I just lost my lure. What's happening everybody? I am back out here at the old campground and I am doing a little segment here this this week, this weekend really, that I like to call bringing out the oddballs. That's that's kind of, you know, one of those things. What I have is I have four combos with me today that on normal circumstances I would never bring either by themselves or these four together they're kind of oddballs they're oddities and it's really it's just to show you that uh, you can catch fish with just about anything everything that you're about to see was either given to me or bought at uh, an ex extremely low price um, or flea markets um, yard sales whatever everything here so I'm going to show you these four combos, and I'm going to explain a little bit about them as I'm showing them to you. And then we're going to do some fishing with them and see what they'll do. The sun's out, which is for the first time like today at all. And uh, it's some decent weather in the 60s. And we're going to catch some fish with the oddballs. So let's take a look at what we got going on here. All right, let's start over here. First off, we're going to start with a Mitchell 308A. That reel was given to me by a gentleman who bought it brand new and it was in bad shape when he bought it and it fell apart the first couple times that he used it and he handed it to me and said it's been in my tackle box since pretty much the late or early 70s, late 60s. I fixed it. I use it. It's just how I do things. It is also on a Garcia rod that is kind of a matching era more or less it's a whippy about six footer that we're gonna catch some fish on with some uh mr crappie line on it there second in line this is the zebco 33 gold now the gold has a three bearing setup it comes with 10 pound line i bought that at ollie's that reel i bought at ollie's for 19.99 this rod is a uh, shimano i've had the rod for years and i bought it at a yard sale had it forever so i paid 19.99 for that there you go 19.99 and i bought that at a yard sale for probably five dollars or something like that okay your next one this is a reel that's been around forever uh, it's a little Daiwa underspin now this model number on this one is the uh, us 40 xd these little guys have been around forever um i got that at walmart they were blowing them out and i bought that for 19 bucks and this is also on a Bass Pro Shops Microlite rod, which, again, it's one of those ones, if you swing back too far on it, it'll hit you right in the butt. But it's a, it's a fun rod to catch stuff on. Now, this other one, this is a Pen 712Z. And yes, Pen is really more, you know, your saltwater stuff. Now, this is a 712. This falls into about a 2,000, 3,000 size. I brought that with me. We're going to use that over at the river more than we are today. But I have it also on a Bass Pro Shops rod that I'm pretty sure I picked up at a uh, flea market for pretty much a little bit of nothing. That reel was given to me by a good friend of mine at work, the Bubba. That's right, the Bubba gave me that reel. I cleaned it up last night, re-greased it, oiled it up, and it works really good. We're going to give that a try over at the river. So there you go. That is the oddballs. Just weird little pieces and things. Now, I would normally bring these, maybe bring one with two other good rods and reels or something like that, you know, dependable things that I wouldn't be too worried about. But these four guys together, they are basically the oddballs, and we are going to take them here, and we're going to catch some fish. So let's have some fun. All right, so what are we going with first? We're going to go with the old Mitchell on the Garcia rod. Now this Garcia rod, I think I got since says uh, light action, fast taper. And there's some other stuff that's on there. <laughs> it has three stars. We were doing stars back then too, I guess. 
Now let's see what this thing will do here. The only bad part, and I've said this before about these reels, is that when you flip the bale on this, the only way to get it set again is you have to use the crank to be able to pop it loose and that's the only bad part about them because i really like doing it by hand but it is what it is hey i actually did it by hand i just wanted to see if it would do it but you really shouldn't do that with these because the way that thing holds you can end up uh messing that little arm up Felt that tag. I need to set this drag. How many times I've said that in my life? What do we got here? I'm doing a lot of darting around. I figured that's what you were, Mr. Bluegill. Mr. Grass in your face, Bluegill. Get that off of you. Yeah, they're cold. Must have been some cold rain last night. Pretty little fella. Uh -oh. I felt that guy swim away with it. My goodness. Come on, little whippy rod. Come on. Come on. Nice crappy. Let's go with this. Now, I, these little things have had the, a tendency to aggravate me because sometimes I do not like the way that they retrieve. They get tangled up around this uh, drag knob up here and I don't like that, but hopefully it won't do it. Oh, what just happened? Okay, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's tangled up around that drag link but knob thing that is one of the reasons i never liked these things it was and it now i mean this is a brand new one and it's doing it that's crazy come on diwa or did i no i guess i didn't miss him wow <laughs> <laughs> you can see the end of this rod. This is hilarious. Let me try to put it down here where you can see it. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. Look at that thing. Look, look. I don't know if you can see that. That little old crappie has got this thing bent over. Oh, that's hilarious. They cast pretty far, but sometimes it is a little hard to get used to this trigger thing. Especially if you're trying to cast for distance. They're great for small creeks and rivers and stuff if you're trying to cast under uh, limbs and brush that's hanging over. Because you can flip it. Now this little guy only comes standard with four pound line on it, but it says you can put six on it. I don't know what six would do on this little thing. Um, you definitely wouldn't get the distance of cast, but I'm not getting a whole lot of long distance with this rod anyway, because this this rod is really slingshotting more than it is anything, because when you whip this thing backwards, you have to be really careful where you release that, because, I mean, look at that tip, okay? That's a 1 16th ounce jig on the end of that thing. I don't you can see how much that tip is bending. So when you release, if you were trying to go there, you better release over here. Because otherwise, if you release in here, it's going over there. That's just how it is. Okay? Did we learn anything from that? There'll be a test next week. Oh, oh did we do it again? That's how you always know that it does it. Yep, it did it again. Yeah, you keep this up, little fella. I'll be letting you go somewhere else. Got him. He picked really fast, more blue gilly acting. Yep. Even with the grass on him, I can tell what he is.
pretty little guy. Across the water over there, I see my wife. She's waving. Hmm. There we go. There we go. He was out there deep. He was out there deep. Hello, Mr. Bass. Stop spinning. Quit that. Quit that nonsense. So, it's the next day, Saturday. The temperature has dropped immensely. This morning it was right at 40 when I got up. And the wind is blowing about 25 to 30 mile an hour gusts, which has got the temperature drop down to I think it said a wind chill of about 36 what we're going to do is use one of the rods that I had planned for something else which was this guy here I had planned on using this at the river but we fished last night for about two hours at the river never got a single bite I had the pin 712 Z out there catfishing never got a single bite so what i did this morning was while the wind was blowing 105 miles an hour and i was breaking the ice off my fingertips i put some six pound trout magnet sos on this thing and we're going to try it over here because this is the gold series 33 gold it has a three bearing setup okay I really have been curious, you know, in these reels, if you can even really tell that there's three bearings in it as opposed to just the regular old Zebco 33s. And let's see how this thing does. I don't know what we might have today. It might be nothing. Well, that, that was impressive for a first cast on a reel that big. Of course, I did change the line, so... Wow, I, that's impressive, I gotta say. Um, I got this reel at Ollie's for $19.99. They usually sell for the in between uh, $29 and th oh, oh, we got a hit right there. $29, $30 or more. And uh, yeah, whatever that was, try to take my bait off there. And I've, I've never had a fancy Zebco. Uh, that's the best I can tell you. I've, I've never had a fancy Zebco. I've always had just your basic everyday Zebco reels. Now I know Zebco is making. Wow. <laughs> that is pretty impressive. Zebco was making some pretty high dollar reels. Um, $100 and more. Man, I wasn't expecting that. I was not expecting that. <laughs> huh, that was way out there and he hit it as it fell. That's pretty cool. And barely got him. Barely got him. Now this three bearing thing, I mean, it is smoother than I'm basically used to when it comes down to these reels. Reeling that fish in just now, though it wasn't a huge fish, wasn't really easy as I thought it would be. Uh oh, uh oh. Got him, got him, got him, got him. They're out there in the middle. Oh, you sucked that right on down make things complicated for me oh oh there we go we got him we got him oh what's happening Gil 
Oh, I'm going to slap myself in the face with Gil. Gil always manages to get the grass. Check your local ollies. Check yard sales. Check flea markets. Check your coat at the door. Check whatever you want to check. But I'm saying you can get out there and you can get fishing with some of this stuff for just a little bit of money. You haven't hurt yourself if the, oh oh we got a hit right there. If you you know somebody leaves it accidentally at a picnic bench or uh, falls off the boat, whatever. But you can still. I mean, here I am, 53 years old, and I'm out here blasting these things, catching crappie and bluegill. Oh, I got hits right there. These fish are hitting this thing on the fall. It's kind of funny. I saw the line jump. Oh, we got him. Yeah. We got him. It is a darn shame you can't eat these fish. Oh, man. That one. That might be a record for here. That's a big one. He might deserve a picture. I absolutely hate not catching anything on pink and white. I don't want to take it off without having something caught on. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Before we left, I try here in the middle. We're going to use the old Mitchell 308. Garcia Mitchell 308. Try to cast in between these trees. Glad I tried. Well, there he is. Folks, if you don't have you some of this old equipment like this, try to find you something. It is so much fun. Flimsy but fun. That's a nice bass. I wasn't expecting that. A little bass right there. That's a nice fish. Mm, I had him. Oh, I still got him. He came back after it. Did have something very interesting happen. I don't know why I'm bothering to tell you, but I caught a little little dink and I noticed an incredibly huge mud trail coming from behind him. And there was about a three pounder chasing this dink that I had hooked. And I tried like the Dickens to get him to mouth on to him, but he didn't do it. He he tried a couple times and then yeah, there's a little tiny bass chasing it. I mean a tiny thing. Y'all better watch it. There's a big one out there and he's ready to eat all y'all. Oh, oh, oh. oh, I like that though. There's my bass. Oh, get out of the sticks. Get out of the sticks. Dang it, did you have to take it in so deep? There he is. They love to get along these bushes here and these rocks. Just like that. Did 
just like that. <laughs> Pink and white on the Zebco. One last chance and see just how it does. Get a couple fish caught with it. I mean, I don't know if y'all can tell, but the wind is just howling out here. It is now temperature has dropped. It's cold, probably in the mid 40s right now. A little bass right at the bank there. Little fella. Stop that. No. Oh, we got hit. Oh, we got a fish. Some more crappie thing happening. Small. There we go. There it is. That see that? I tried to cast. Look what's happened. Okay, Daiwa. I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt here, but if that crap's going to keep happening, I'll tell you right now, I will send this thing packing. That makes no sense whatsoever. You tell me that you can't make a reel that doesn't do this. That after all the years that this reel has been made, you can't figure out a way to make that not do that? Well, I just lost my lure. Because it got stuck. So, take a good look at this one, boys and girls, because you'll never see it again. It's very, very sunny outside, but it's 36 degrees, but the wind isn't blowing, so it's going to be, you know, 36 degrees and not 31 degrees. So the question is now, at 36 degrees, bright and sunny, no wind, do we go fish? I think yes. So now let's talk about the fishing reels and the rods that I brought. Unfortunately, one of them didn't really even get used because I wanted to use it at the river and try to catfish with it. Now, I did take it out there, I did cast with it, and it does cast fine, it retrieves fine, and that would be the Pen 712Z. Very, very cool rod and reel, specifically the reel. And I have other uh, reasons for using it, so it will get out again very soon. Now, the other three, uh, let's talk about the Mitchell, the 308. 308A, that was my favorite. That was my absolute favorite with the Garcia rod. That right there is, a, is just such a cool setup. It worked great. Cast really good distance. The, the rod is, is whippy, but man, is it fun. Is it fun. So that was my top uh, as far as what I enjoyed using the most. Now, second was the Zebco 33 Gold that came from Ollie's. You gotta love Ollie's. Everything is $20 cheaper in Ollie's. I've never had one with the, the gold version that has more bearings. It has a three bearing set up and it came with 10 pound line on it. Now I took the 10 pound line off because it had been on there for quite some time and it, wow. I mean, it, it coiled up like a spring. So I changed the line and put, uh, what did I put on there? Six pound. I put six pound trout magnet on there because really that's all I had with me that would do the job. But it did great uh, with that 1 16th ounce jig, uh, Roadrunner jig. It went really far. I caught a lot of fish with it and had a great time with that thing. That was fun. Really fun. And it had that Shimano Convergence rod that came from uh, Flea Market. So that was fun. Had a good time with that one. Now third is depressing because it was the Daiwa, the... Uh, US 40 
and it has two other letters, X something, whatever, I can't remember what it is. And it's not worth remembering, to be honest with you, because it was terribly annoying. Uh, I hope I got on video at this point, I'm, I'm assuming maybe I did, what it kept doing. And you would think Daiwa, that's been around as long as they have, making that real as long as they have, would have figured out these little inconveniences and taken care of it. That string would get wrapped around the uh, that extremely tall um, drag nut on the top of that thing. And then when you go to cast it, not realizing that it's wrapped around there, because you can't really tell. You cast, it won't go anywhere. Or if it does, it goes about three feet and stops. Well, the last straw was casting and snapping the line and losing that Roadrunner jig out there into the lake, which, as we know, are hard to come by where I'm at. I've mentioned that quite a few times. Uh, Walmarts have them. And fortunately, on a lighter note, uh, I talked to the guy that does some of the stocking for Walmart and works for those companies, Roadrunner being one of them. I just happened to bump into him at a Walmart locally in Yorktown, and he is now the Walmarts locally around there going to stock those on my shelves. Ha ha ha. So sometimes uh, right place, right time. Works out very well. Anyway, back to that Daiwa. That came from Walmart also. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was on the clearance item rack. I should have let them just clear it to somebody else. because Unless I can figure out why it does that and wraps that line around that center piece and fix it that little guy will never see the water again it's terribly annoying because it's such a cool looking piece and such a artistic looking <laughs> and for lack of better words looking real that it's so cool you want to use it it just draws you to it and you want to use it but you it's, it's going to constantly every you know fifth to fifteenth cast or whatever wrap itself up and then you sling a bait off and lose the bait because it broke the line I can't play that I'm sorry I don't have time for that nonsense um, so there you go that's my three Mitchell 308 Zebco 33 gold and poor little Daiwa well I'm gonna work on it but I don't don't have my hopes up about that one that's a shame too so anyway Let's go fish and maybe we'll just fade out on that and uh, I'll tell you goodbye out there somewhere when I'm freezing to death or my fingers are locked in place or I'm calling my wife to come get me because I need to thaw out. Come here. There you go. Second cast. <laughs> 